So it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Logan Frank. Dr. Frank also resides in Nebraska, and so he traveled here um, to talk with you because of his, um, I think, fondness for pharmacy technicians. He helps me a lot at the university. He speaks with technicians on a regular basis um, about the topic that he'll talk on today, professionalism. Um, and so please help me in welcoming Dr. Frank. You just advance on your own. And then this is for the filmer, so this is, she can stay close. Yeah. All right. I don't think I've ever given a presentation with, with a microphone in my hand, so this will be a little bit different for me. Um, all right, so today we're talking about professionalism. I'm sure everybody's super excited to talk about professionalism. Very, very popular topic. Um, but I think we're going to go a little bit beyond just the normal professionalism um, aspects. So today, um, or I guess I do want to give a background. Um, I am a associate or a assistant clinical professor um, with the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, so what that means is I kind of work in primary care in pharmacy. Um, I do pick up shifts in a community pharmacy, pharmacy as well, um, associated with our um, academic medical center. All right, so today, um, our objectives, we're gonna recognize the AAPT Code of Ethics. Is this too loud? No. Okay. Um, describe professional and non-professional behaviors, and then we're gonna prioritize lifestyle um, of a professional throughout one's life. So I know since we're a small audience, I did um, set this up as kind of a text message um, poll everywhere, but we're small, let's, let's just talk about it instead. Um, so what is professionalism? What do you guys think professionalism is? How you act. Say again? How you act. How you act, okay. And, and what kind of act? What, what makes it professional acting? Uh, maturity. Maturity, that's a good one. How your patients perceive you. How patients perceive you, that's a really good one. Yes. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. So we're doing a lot of the traits, but what, what, how would you term, how would you give a definition of professionalism? Putting what, the patient first. Putting the patient first, that's a good one, yep. The way I like to define it is go to Merriam-Webster, right? <laughs> give the definitions, right? So Merriam-Webster states um, the conduct or qualities um, that characterize or mark a profession or professional person. As always, Merriam-Webster likes to give the, the root of the word in their definition. So defining professionalism with professionals doesn't work out very well. Um, so it's more of a calling. A profession is a calling required um, specialized knowledge and often uh, long and intensive academic preparation. So pharmacy technicians, it's a profession, right? You're, you're gaining knowledge. You have to go through academic preparation. Um, being here, you're doing that continual academic pre uh, preparation. Um, so that's kind of what a profession is. What a professional is, is those qualities. Um, there's so many qualities out there, so usually professions come together and make a code of conduct or a code of ethics to really pull that information um, and really define it for the people of the profession. So as we kind of started talking about, what are some common traits of professionalism? So we talked about how you act, we talked about how people perceive you, what else? What are some traits? Honesty. Honesty, that's a good one. Integrity. Integrity. You guys are like going off my next slide. It's almost like you have that. Any other traits? Give me one more. Respect. Respect. Yes. So those are a lot of the good traits. Um, the, the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board actually puts together that code of conduct. Um, and in that code of conduct, it basically states that pharmacy technicians, the priority is the healthful interest of its patients um, and also to put, protect the public. So making sure that the public is protected, um, they, they keep their health in order to live a, a long, healthy life. Um, and they actually break it down into abiding by legal and ethical um, standards. So legal, we know how much in pharmacy and pharmacy technician world is legal. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit. 
um, but also the ethical side. So integrity, uh, responsibility, um, improving, so not just staying state, steady where we're at, improving um, as we go, honesty, confidentiality. Um, what's the big term for confidentiality? HIPAA. HIPAA, yep. So maintaining HIPAA. And then the last one there is encouraging others to do the same. Um, that's what this conference is, right? You're getting around people, um, talking through um, different topics, and encouraging others that you're gonna bring back to your specific pharmacy settings and kind of portray that um, to your coworkers. Uh, what, what's everybody practicing? Are we, are we in community pharmacy? Are we in hospital pharmacy, managed care? What are we, what are we looking at? How about, can you raise your hand for community pharmacy? No one's in community pharmacy. Hospital? We got a couple. Like managed care or insurance? Insurance, okay. Anybody else that didn't raise their hand, where are you guys at? Long-term care mental health. Long-term care mental health, great. Uh, outpatient, oncology, infusion. Okay, infusion pharmacy, that's awesome, yep. So kind of that mix of hospital and, and community setting there. Awesome, so yes, uh, but in each setting, you know that what you bring back um, can really encourage your, your coworkers um, along the way. So that's the code of conduct to legal and ethical standards. Um, so when we look at legal standards, um, the big one, we always need to maintain our appropriate credentials, right? Why do we have to maintain our credentials? Why do you have to be licensed as a pharmacy technician? Required by law. Required by law, right? Legality. Um, what happens if you don't? Or what happens if you're late uh, re-upping your credentials? What happens to you? In your position. Say again? Get fined. Get fined, yes. Can you be practicing? No, right? You can't be in your, your setting anymore. What does that do to your setting? Slows production. Slows production. How many pharmacy areas um, that you're working at right now are understaffed? Right? There's never, never enough people in the pharmacy. So if you lose your credentials, what's that going to do? Make it even worse, right? Um, I don't think your colleagues will say, oh, you're just taking a week vacation while you get those credentials up there, right? They won't, they won't appreciate that very much. Um, so maintaining those credentials are really important um, to make sure that you are in the pharmacy, you're in that setting, um, and able to uh, continue that workflow. Um, legality also talks about um, duty report, first-hand knowledge. So what's first-hand knowledge? Specifically to you that you're, you know personally about it. Yep. So you've seen it. You you know the thing that happened. Secondhand knowledge would be someone told you, right? Someone told you something happened. Um, so your duty to report. So if anybody has missing credentials, you do have to let the board of pharmacy know, um, the state know, because that that is practicing without licensure. Um, the other one is working well impaired. When we say impaired, what are we talking about? Say again? Drug, drug, yep, drugs or alcohol. That's kind of what we're thinking about. Um, we always think of alcohol in our society, right? But we're in pharmacy. Medications are very common. We see them everywhere um, in our settings. So being aware that if you see diversion, um, we do have to report that as well. Um, so as far as the legal standards go, those are the big two that kind of encompass all of pharmacy. No matter which state you're in, no matter where you're at, um, these are the very common legal standards. Um, some other common ones um, is not making recommendations. I know there's a couple exclusions to that, but verifying recommendations. Um, as a technician, you shouldn't directly state that to a um, patient. And then um, having the pharmacist be the final verification. A little bit changes on that of where tech check tech is, is coming up, but uh, for the most part, those are our legal standards, um, which you guys should know, should know those, and of course, there'll be legal standards in each state. It's a little bit different. So the legal side, now how about the ethical side? So this come, these next 10 points come straight from the AAPT Board of Directors. Um, 
So not, not great things to, to kind of study, but it really encompasses a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, so first one, ensuring the health and safety of the patient. So ethically, um, we go back to our code, we gotta keep protection and we gotta keep, the, um, gotta keep the protection of the patient. So first one here is health and safety of that patient. Um, support and promote the honesty and integrity of the profession, which includes duty to observe the law. So the legality is even in this code of ethics. Um, keep that ethical conduct. Maintains competency, again, credentials, or doing this continuing to education, um, which is needed. Uh, meet the standards required by law. So knowing the legality um, in your specific setting and what that looks like. Um, and then the last one here, support organizations. So again, we're all here. We're supporting the organization, supporting that progression of pharmacy. Next one here assists and supports the pharmacist in the safe and efficacious um, distribution of medications. So I know we don't have anybody in the community setting here, um, but even in hospital setting. So if something is wrong with a product, if there's an IV bag that has, looks cloudy or doesn't look right, and we put the medication into that bag and, and give it to the pharmacy, it may not look the same, right? Technician's responsibility there is to make sure that, hey, these products are good products, they can be used um, in the patient safely. Pharmacists may not notice that difference or that starting um, abnormality once a medication's in there. It may just look like every other bag. Um, so knowing that there are issues in products and not using those products that are very important that a pharmacist can't always check. Our respect and values on the abilities of pharmacists. So knowing that a pharmacist has certain responsibilities and technicians have certain responsibilities. Yes, there is a, there's a separation, but there's also a lot of that is at that same goal um, of that patient care. Um, respect and support patients' individuality. So each patient's different. We know in each of our settings that when we talk to patients or interact with patients, not everyone's the same. There's some similarities, but knowing that each patient we're talking to needs to be a little bit different. Uh, next one's here is the HIPAA, so confidentiality. Um, look at the patient's records or disclosures, uh, making sure that the patients, um, when you're taking care of the patient, everything that you address is a need to know basis. So it's not something that you're um, giving out information um, just for, for the good of the pharmacy, make sure it's in the good of the patient. And the last one here, um, of these 10, is to look at the illegal or unethical conduct um, and don't engage in those, in those standards. So went through kind of the code of ethics and the principles, um, but I think a lot of that is just verbiage, right? We need to actually know how to incorporate this into our practice. Um, I like this professional pyramid. Um, this comes from American Journal of Pharmaceutical Education um, article. Uh, it kind of puts into three steps here. So we have competence. It's kind of that base. In, in your, your setting, your practice, if you don't have the competence or the skill to do your job, we can't do anything else, right? So got to get that base of competence, <clears throat> move it up to connection, connection with your patients, and then top it off with the character, the character in which you practice. So the taxonomies um, kind of breaks down how to get to those levels. So within competence, self-directed learning. Again, continuing education, coming to conferences, interacting with others that have the same goal of increasing that knowledge, increasing that applied skill, um, and that proactivity. Um, in pharmacy, we know how we start with, um, start with our, our position. There's not really a lot of proactivity, right? We're retroactively trying to learn and, and grow in that area. Once you get to know what you're doing, be proactive. Um, fill prescriptions or, or look at these steps that um, happen more often, and that proactivity can really make the flow of the pharmacy or flow of your profession uh, run a lot smoother. It ends, that competence ends with wisdom of being able to basically teach others. So when you have new employees, now you can teach them the, path, the pathway or the, the skills needed in order to, again, make that pharmacy or make that setting um, run more smoothly. Um, connections, that second one, uh, you create connections with both your, your coworkers as well as patients by being compassionate, um, showing empathy, 
uh, have self-control. Uh, for those that do interact with patients, we know how much we need that self-control, right? Um, patients usually don't like to talk to pharmacy or like to get medications. They, they really want that um, individuality of, of not being reliant on something like that. So maintain that self-control in order to redirect patients and, and really keep their, their healthful interests in mind. Um, have kindness and then influence others. Again, I'm mean, gonna keep coming back to that influence others. I think that is a huge part of um, pharmacies um, outlook and how they how they interact each day so influencing others within that setting and outside of that setting in order to keep a positive um, light on on their situations and last one here's character we hit a lot of these in our in our traits of a professionalism already so that honesty integrity um, humility responsibility um, and then service to others the last one here is moral courage what does that mean Go ahead. Doing what's right Yep, exactly. So the moral, you can kind of break it down. Moral is, is doing those right things, and then the courage is not caring about what other people think. So keeping that courage to do those right things, um, no matter how, how others interact. All right, so we went through a bunch of traits. What traits did we kind of go through that you didn't think of previously that would mark a professionalism or professional person? Competency, yep. Yeah, and it's interesting that that's something we didn't think of when that's the base, really. Like, if we don't have the competence, it's hard to move up the ladder in, in professionalism. What about your demeanor or positive demeanor? Yep, positive demeanor, yes. Mm -hmm. Courage, I think. Courage is a good one. So we talked about a lot of traits already. It kind of brings you to the question of what is the goal of professionalism? Just continue to grow. Continue to grow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else? You want to bring that up with like you talked about going to pharmacies well going back to dr klepsers i know no one goes to a physician's office here so no one probably has ever been to a pharmacy either but um yes patients don't like going to pharmacies so they don't usually have a positive outlook on going to get medications so i think that's uh, that self-control is very very important um but i think you guys are all touching on what it really means to have the goal of professionalism which in my eyes it's the patient right patient-centered care we're professional in order to give that, give a good atmosphere, a good um, healthy atmosphere to be efficient, to be safe um, in medications. If we aren't safe, medical errors occur, right? So 200 to 400,000 deaths annually in the US from medical <coughs> errors. Not saying that's just prescription medications, that's procedures, that's everything. But this data is a little bit old, I couldn't get any newer data. But we're talking, um, this comes from 2021, kind of the rise of COVID. We're talking it's just under heart disease and cancer, right? And this is annually. It's a lot of deaths. It's a lot of injury. A lot of uh, bad things happen when we don't act in professional manners, right? We don't create the safest aspect, safest um, pathway for patients. We don't have that patient in the center of our attention. 
So what does professional behavior actually look like? I think we, we talk a lot of professionalism and we're checking the boxes of like what it actually looks like, what, what do um, the code of ethics, the code of conduct look like, um, but every day, what does it actually look like? So first thing, timeliness. We talked about how understaffed our pharmacies or pharmacy settings are. If we don't get to work on time, again, that makes it more efficient. Like it makes us get behind from the beginning. I'm sure no one gets to work every, um, every morning and says, oh, there's nothing to do five minutes into their shift, right? That's always the backup. The beginning is always the, the most brutal uh, time of the day. So getting there on time, making sure everybody's working together to get caught up or get to a, a steady state is really important. Um, when you're at the pharmacy or at your setting, be present and focused. Does anybody have phone rules or phone, um, whatever you want to say, standard operating procedures? I see some heads shaking, right? Don't use your phone, right? Don't, don't be scrolling while we're, we're in our area. If you do have a thing going on in your life, letting the team know. Like maybe you have a son or daughter sick or um, a relative not doing well and you need to be on your phone. Just make that known. Like don't make it a standard practice, but say, hey, I might be on my phone a little bit more today because this is going on in my life. Still here, still trying to be present and focused, but know that I'm not trying to be disrespectful to, to everyone else. So keeping that um, present and focused atmosphere. <clears throat> Maintain positivity. Um, like we said, those that work in, in settings, how easy is it to be in that pharmacy setting and someone has some complaint about something and then since someone complained about something, whether it's in their life or in the pharmacy, then the next person says something bad and just kind of goes down that negative. Everybody wants to share that negativity. Big thing in professionalism is turning that script. What can we say that's positive? Um, I know in the, the presentation we just had, we talked a lot about like pharmacy, not, uh, pharmacy technicians not getting paid enough. But hey, we're, we're in this setting that we're trying to fight for new ways to look at that and new opportunities that will bring about um, more pay or bring about a change in what, what a pharmacy technician looks like. So whether it's that or whether it's an everyday, like, hey, um, see something negative, try to spin that. Look at the bright side. There's bright side to every situation. So keeping that in the pharmacy is very important. Um, in order to do that, you really have to take care of yourself, both physically and mentally. So we know we're at um, our position, maybe eight to 10 hours a day, right? If you go home and all you do is go to sleep and you wake up the next day and do it again, do you, are you refreshed? Did you do something mentally stimulating or physically stimulating to kind of give you better rest, make you look forward to, to your days? Um, if you don't do that, it's hard to keep that positivity in, in, in your setting, right? So doing things um, outside of your, your job or of your, your career choice to really keep that, keep yourself refreshed. Uh, willing to put time in um, to help patients. So we all know we're getting close to maybe five minutes left in our shift, right? And something happens or a closing of the pharmacy or, or wherever the case is. Do we really want to help that person that brings five prescriptions or has plenty of things? I see, I see the little laugh and we know that happens. We know that happens all the time, right? Um, we don't want to, but hey, think about it from their side. We know that they're not excited to be there. They're getting medications that they need. Like usually at that point of the night, it's probably pain medications and antibiotics, right? So those things can really help the patient if we take an extra 10 minutes um, out of their day. And going about that with that positive light instead of saying, oh, I can't believe I have to do this. I have, I have to be here 10 minutes longer in my shift. Like, is that really a, a deal breaker um, for what you're doing? Um, just keeping that patient centered um, in your approach. And use appropriate greetings. So professional behavior, we're thinking about addressing individuals and in miss or mister um, instead of maybe their first name until you get to know them. Uh, we know in all our settings, we, we get to know patients and we have a little bit better relationship with them that really does improve even your aspect throughout the day. Um, when you see a patient that you enjoy talking to or enjoy um, talking with, it's a lot easier to, to interact with them. But just making sure you use professional um, greetings and those that you may not. A big one, neat appearance. So 
I obviously can't come up with the best way to describe um, dress, especially for females, um, but looking at your dress code. So what does it look like in your pharmacy? Are you, are you in this casual setting? Or are you in more of this um, business formal or, or what aspect? Um, and making sure you have professional attire. Uh, I always say when in question, go a little more formal, right? No one's gonna um, state that you, you dress too nice for this occasion, right? If you do, people just compliment you. And now if you dress down, that gives a little bit more negative tone to, to the pharmacy or to that setting uh, where it didn't seem like you were prepared. The thing we don't want people to come to work like this, right? Not, not combing our hair, haven't drank our coffee yet, just look like they rolled out of bed, right? We wanna, be, we wanna make sure we look professional and look like we're ready to be there. Can you imagine um, talking to a patient right away in the morning looking, looking like this, right? Is the patient gonna feel safe or feel positive about being in that situation? I would say no. So making sure you, you get yourself ready, um, get yourself prepared um, in order to get out. Professional, professionalism goes a lot into communication as well. So verbally, what does that look like to have good verbal communication? Non-slang. Non-slang, that's a really good one. I like that. So using empathy and respect as well. So really caring for those patients. Thinking about your words. Um, words do matter a lot um, in each setting, especially with interacting with patients. So making sure you bring those words out um, and, and making sure you're, you're keeping that patient-centered. Um, using that proper demeanor uh, with patients. So keeping that light, um, positive tone instead of a negative tone um, when we're talking. Something that gets overlooked often is our nonverbals. So I, I take this um, as a lot of people aren't in the community setting, but a lot of times when patients bring a prescription up, um, you go right to the computer and start typing the computer, right? You're never looking at the patient. So again, be present and focused. If you're talking with a patient or talking to a co coworker, instead of sitting on the computer and typing and looking at the computer while you're talking, give them your attention. Look at them. Talk to them. Um, show attention. Show you generally care. Instead of just making it seem like you're doing your job. Um, keep that professional aspect and center it on the patient. Telephone. How do we have good communication on a telephone? Your tone? Your tone? Yep. How do we give a good tone? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Keeping softer tone. And I would say the best way to do that is with your nonverbals. Keep a smile while you're talking on the phone. You know how hard it is to have a bad tone when you're um, smiling? Hey, I really don't like, don't like talking to you or whatever the case is. Like keeping that smile on, it's really hard to have a bad tone. Um, you guys should try it. And we should all know that with our masks that we've had for years, right? Like keeping that smile behind the mask is the same concept as over a telephone. And then emails. So if we're sending emails to um, coworkers or to, um, I usually don't do them to patients, coworkers or um, pharmacists or anything along those lines, making sure you use uh, professional demeanor in that as well. Using formal language, um, being brief, being concise. Uh, if, if you're having to email somebody saying you're not gonna be able to do the shift or you're looking for somebody to pick up a shift, making it formal. Um, saying specifically what's going on, but don't give this huge paragraph of explaining um, this funeral that you're going to for your uh, sister's dog's husband. Like, right, we, we, we just want the detail. We want this small, minute details um, that we need. So going off to the other end, we talked a lot about what it looks like to be professional. How about the other side? What's unprofessional behavior look like? Being short with people? Body language, yes. Those nonverbals. So what, what would be non what would be body language that shows unprofessional behavior? Slouching. Slouching. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Attitude. Yep. Yep. What kind of facial is it? Say again? Yes. Sign and eye rolling. Yes. Yep. And right, we, we laugh about that because we like, of course that's unprofessional. But I mean, have we seen that in our settings? Do we see those things? I mean, we talked about having a bad day where you kind of bring that out um, in your setting. And, and that's just not professional, right? That's not taking care of the patient. That's not showing them the respect that they deserve. Um, and again, like that's, those are settings that they don't really like the situation they're in when they're coming to a pharmacy or, or dealing with a pharmacist. I don't think there's many patients that'll come to you and be like, I want a new medication because I just want another medication on my medication list. So that doesn't happen. Keeping, keeping in mind that the patient doesn't want to be in that situation themselves. So keeping it light for them um, is very important. Any other unprofessional behaviors? Okay. Got a little Venn diagram here for it. So you can break it down into kind of three ca categories. Aggressive, passive, or passive aggressive. So aggressive is kind of what we think of as very obviously unprofessional, right? Using threats, um, anger, yelling, um, throwing things. So should we ever throw a bottle of medication to get it filled? Probably not, right? I'd still say that's unprofessional. Obviously throwing something at someone is even more unprofessional, but keeping that light of, of um, moving slowly, moving to the point of handing things instead of throwing. Uh, pushing, swearing, obviously non-professional. Passively, uh, being chronically late. We talked about that. Timeliness is very important. If you're chronically late, you're always pulling people into very slow situations or um, really getting behind instead of, instead of keeping them at the, at the pace that we, they need to. Um, avoiding. So if we avoid situations, avoid people, um, we talked about patients that we may like or dislike. If we start avoiding the patients that we dislike and not bringing about that, that both bringing negativity and also bringing um, kind of inefficient workflow, um, not having that patient at the center of our attention. Non-participation in our settings um, or not being prepared. So not being prepared is just like I talked about of talking or getting that mental break when you get home and getting yourself prepared, physically, mentally. If you're not prepared, it doesn't have to be you're, you're thinking about what tasks you have to do. Um, it's just getting your body prepared for that next day. Uh, passive aggressiveness, hostile notes. How many people get notes when they start their shifts? Those sticky notes, right? Very common, very common. You put sticky notes in there. So what can we do to be Obviously, those notes need to happen. They're, they're informing about things that need to be done. But doing a little more than, hey, can you do this? Put a little background. Like, hey, we got really backed up at the end of the shift. This wasn't able to get completed. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't able to do that. Putting a little bit of, of more attention to, to the note. Putting a smiley face at the end. Like, so people know you generally are, are sorry about it or doing like that to give a little light lightheadedness or light um, uh, light demeanor to the to the situation might be good um, inappropriate joking obviously shouldn't happen the complaining the blaming um, those are things we've, we've touched on already that's very important to avoid um, if we mess something up or did something wrong taking ownership of it um, instead of saying ah it's because the pharmacist didn't check it right Take ownership, say, hey, I, I was in this process. Um, I, should have, I should be doing this differently. Um, I think the passive aggressive one is the one that we probably see most often. It's the most overlooked one, where we, we know the aggressive, we know the passive are very unprofessional, but the passive aggressive um, areas are things that happen, and just putting, changing that kind of script of what that actually looks like. Um, I do want to point out that things like social media are, are non exempt. So, if we, if we have a shift and we're having some of this go on, we can't go to social media and post about it and have that passive aggressive um, comments in there or, or commenting or liking things that are unprofessional because that looks poorly on us 
as professionals, as well as our profession in general, um, which kind of goes against that code of ethics. All right, this is kind of where we're going beyond professionalism here. So what traits do you use in your professional setting, but not in your social or family life? Mm -hmm. like you're saying on emails. Yep, formal language. Yep. That's a good one. Anything else? How you address people? How you address people? Yep. Less formal, Less formal at home when you address people? Good. It's probably because you know them a lot better, right? Hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you dress, yep. You don't wear a tie very much when you're um, sitting on the couch at home, right? Yes, those are good ones. Kind of hard to pull out things, right? I think that's the point. So what's it take to be a good person? Is a good person just somebody that's professional when they're at work? Or is that kind of a lifestyle, right? So Merriam-Webster, again, good definitions. Uh, a good person or a good people is an honest, helpful, or morally good person. Um, BetterHelp.com kind of defines that a little bit differently there. Empathy, honesty, humility, fairness, responsibility. Do those terms look like other things we've talked about already? Let's see some slow head moves. Right? So professionalism and how we act at home should be very similar. Right? This isn't something that should turn on when we get to the pharmacy or get to our, our position. Um, professionalism is a lifestyle. Going back to some of the traits we talked about, these behaviors, do these sound like normal life situations? So timeliness, when we're, when we're going to a family gathering or a HOA meeting or a sports event, sporting event, is timeliness matter? Yeah, so if we're going to a Lakers game, let's say, are we, are we gonna show up 10 minutes late to Lakers game? No, if you're going to Lakers game, you're probably there a half hour, hour early, making sure you're getting your seats, you have the, the <coughs> concessions that you want, you get to see LeBron um, warming up, whatever the case is, right? So why don't we do that when we're getting to our job, right? An hour early would be quite excessive, but it's the concept that timeliness matters no matter what setting. So it doesn't have to be a different, different approach whether you're, you're going to work or going to, into your pharmacy setting uh, versus just your life. The more you do in your life too, the easier it will be um, in your professional life. Um, no matter what, go ahead, yeah. Uh, so Sometimes when technicians are not getting paid and um, they're looking for management to step in in certain situations, I feel like in those in those particular circumstances that might affect timeliness, president's focus, you know, and maintaining positivity. Mm -hmm. So therefore, sometimes when you have people who work for companies and then they're higher ups. Attitudes from higher ups can trickle down where technicians will go to work and they're not going to be no problem because now they have this attitude of, I don't have anybody except other technicians who have my back and then we can speak for each other or represent one another or, um, you know, yeah. we don't have anybody and, and I've heard it. <laughs> so in this case, I, I would have to say maybe it depends on the circumstances. Yeah, no, I agree. Circumstances definitely matter. But thinking about if we're, if we're asking for more pay and, and more um, benefits to a profession, um, no matter what setting, if we're talking technicians, pharmacists, physicians, anything like that, 
If we're chronically late to our position and we're asking for more pay or more benefits, the chances of that happening are not great. If we can't show that professional manner, if we don't show that respect to the position, it's hard to say, hey, I know I'd get here 15 minutes late, but I should get paid $5 more. Like, yes, walkouts and, and strikes happen, but that's, we're not gonna go down that path. But yes, situational definitely matters. Um, I think the goal of this slide is just to talk about like, hey, it's not just in the setting, not in, just in our career, it's our life. Right? These are traits that if we, we incorporate into our life, it's going to make it very easy to keep that positivity, that, that demeanor um, in, our, in our professional life. Yes? But I also feel like it, it's kind of a cycle, though, in the sense that that is in taking care of yourself. Like, if you're, if you're trying to blame that you can't follow the rest of the rules and let somebody higher up, because mm -hmm. they're not, then you need to take care of yourself and get out of that. Yes, yeah, if, if the higher up do not abide by professional manners, yes, it is very hard. Yep, yep, and I think that's a good point, that if they aren't following it, it's hard to change that. I'd say you try that, but if you need to move on to a different setting, that's what you gotta do, right? Again, if you, if we all know that situation where we're not mentally prepared and, and work is affecting our personal life, if we can't flip that switch or, or get prepared, maybe it is a time to find a different setting that you can be around more people that are positive or wanting to bring that professional demeanor um, to their job. It's a good point. But I feel like it has to come from both ends. Yes. Both ends affecting each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, although I, I get what you're saying, yeah. but what if somebody's in a position where that's their only Choice and their only option. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who live on their own, raising children on their own. And it's like they may feel stuck. Yep. Um, unless they do something where they can add on more certificates and you know enhance their career, enhance their education, and then move on from there. So now I think where would be where could someone who's a supervisor, a regional director, mm -hmm. you know, district manager and then you have your technicians and their pharmacists, where could there be common ground? How would they be able to talk with each other and have meetings to see where they can be and yeah. come to some kind of compromise? Because everybody's situation is different. Yep. Um, some people may be able to just get up and go, which is fine, you know, like the young lady stated, you may, you're gonna have to focus on yourself and, and, and do what you need to do to, you know, move on and, and Yep. Which I think both situations, I think the same concept would, would apply, right? So if you aren't able to move or change positions, that's where you really gotta focus on that positivity. Make the setting be how you want it to be. Try to influence others. I mean, we're all we're all talking about how what professionalism looks like and how that demeanor really is infectious to the to the setting. If it's a negative setting, talking with them and being like, hey, like, just being honest. I, I can guarantee you anybody that you talk about, like, th this is being really negative in our pharmacy. Like, yes, we may not have a good situation. What can we do to make it positive? What can we do to actually enjoy our job or enjoy our career choice rather than making it worse on ourselves every day? So if, if you need to have those direct conversations, great. If you have that conversation, the person says, well, I don't like my position and I don't see a future in this, be like, well, one, why are you here? If that situation is you can't feel like you get out, why don't we enjoy it instead of make it harder on ourselves? So having those, and that's professional manners. That's 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 bringing out what we want, um, and sh talking about these things of like, if our benefits aren't there or our, our growth isn't where we want it to be, focusing on these things that can change the situation. Um, like Dr. DeClepsar talked about, vaccinations are a big thing that gets pushed back both ways, right? Years ago, it was really like, ah, oh, are pharmacy technicians able to do this? Yes, they are, right? Super easy to do. And really puts a lot more joy into your position, even though you're having to do that on top of other things, gives you something different, right? You're not just filling prescriptions, you're not just filling um, orders. You're, you're actually 
in interacting with patients a little bit more and trying to make that, make that fulfillment in different ways. Yeah, good conversation. So the point of this is really what we're saying is that um, all, of, all of these specific uh, behaviors we can do throughout our life. Uh, willing to put in time for, for family members or friends, um, using appropriate greetings, um, those things are, are very important in our life um, every day. Um, just a couple of slides left here, but um, leading by example. So what does leading by example mean? Treating others with respect. So whether you are at home or, or seeing this person, um, I guess that's a good question. Who, who's all from California or from this area? Couple, okay. Um, is everybody else from the kind of Western United States? Okay, Central United States? Got a few here. Eastern? A lot of Eastern. Great travels, great travels. But it's kind of the thing of like, no matter where you're at and what setting you're in, you gotta treat others with respect. You don't know people, treat them with respect, they'll treat you with respect. Be a light of positivity. I'm gonna drill that one in as far as I can because positivity is real, really what professionalism means. If we are negative, it's hard to be professional. Um, be accountable. So if, if you are, are going and doing something in, in your everyday life, like be accountable. If, if you had something to do with it, something um, somewhat of the cause, be smart and, and take ownership. Be that accountable. Um, and courageous uh, during that process. And I know this last point here, don't, don't uh, compare to others. That's hard to do, right, in our society? It's hard not to compare, but that's important. Um, we don't compare because we don't want to compare just to be good enough, right? We don't want to just get past that little line. We want to be above that line. We want to be as good as we can be in order to influence um, others. Uh, if you act just good enough, that's really gonna fine, fine tune or fine line what, what's professional and what's not. Um, keeping that good moral um, courage is very important. Okay, in summary here, um, going way back to the start, professionalism at the root is legal and ethical. You gotta maintain those, those banners. Um, the three big traits is incorporating competence, connection, and character into your life. So not just into your pr profession, not just being professional. Incorporating those things into everyday life um, really will bring back um, a professional demeanor into your, your uh, life and your uh, professional career. And we talk all about this for the end goal of remaining patient-centered. If we don't prepare ourselves, we can't prepare patients, right? So be patient-centered, do these things, incorporate these things in order to uh, maintain that positivity in the patient care realm. Questions? I know we had some good discussion already, but we have some more. Nothing? Everybody's perfect with professionalism? <laughs> Go ahead. I love your discussion about the And really, you can't be genuine that way. Exactly. And we always talk about work-life balance, right? Talk about that kind of separation between work and life. Yes, there is definitely a separation there. But the term that's kind of growing um, is work-life integration. So not feeling like you are separating them, feeling like they are actually coming together. So traits you use in both, in both situations. Think that's easy to do? Getting our life together? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. But that's the thing, keeping that, keeping that positivity and hoping um, each and every one of you can
can bring that to your pharmacy and bring that to your setting. So, thank you guys, appreciate it.